Hello and good evening. You're super welcome to St. Mark's Armagh and our service of late evening office. It is the 1st of May. Can you believe it? April has gone and it has been an unbelievable month. So if you have been on lockdown, if you are on the front line, or maybe you're in the midst of, of grieving the loss of a loved one, uh, you're really welcome here tonight. And it is my prayer that you will be encouraged uh, in the midst of challenging times. The service is available on the Church of Ireland website, but you can also find it on page 162 of our prayer book. Blessed be our God for all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory be to you, Holy Spirit, Comforter, Treasure of all goodness and giver of life. Come and dwell in us. Cleanse us from sin. And in your love, bring us to salvation. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. And our psalm is Psalm 134. The opening three verses. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that by night stand in the house of the Lord, lift up your hand towards a holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading from the New Testament tonight is from Mark chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Again Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. Jesus said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? to save life or to kill, but they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. Classic, lovely story, five verses, and there's just a lot going on. Our reading tonight highlights another run-in between Jesus and the religious police, otherwise known as the Pharisees. Tragically, many Pharisees were filled with rules and regulations, yet their hearts remained hardened. Head knowledge, it was all there. They knew it all in their heads, but it didn't filter into their hearts and into their lives. Tragic, really tragic. On entering the synagogue, Jesus encountered a man with a withered hand. As soon as I read this story, the first thing I think, is this man planted? Is this a setup? I don't know for sure, just has that feel about it. Or if this man wasn't placed there, the cert somebody certainly seen him there and made sure that he's very visible to Jesus as he enters the synagogue. Jesus is fully aware of what's happening. And do you want what I love most? Jesus doesn't shy away. He doesn't slip into a corner and keep his head down. He really does walk into the centre and take centre stage. And, and those schemers really do believe that their wee plan is working brilliantly. But I love it when it's just turned on his head. Jesus calls the man into the middle of the gathering. Just imagine the tension at this point. Silence from the Pharisees as they're watching. And that sense of people, what's, what's going to kick off? Uh, how, how is this going to out, outwork itself? But at this point, Jesus puts a question to his accusers. Is it against the law on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? Oh, classic, brilliant. So we've, got, we've started off with tension. We're building, feel the apprehension. Jesus' opponents... The Pharisees are reduced to silence. The accusers have been put back in their box. 
They have neither the honesty nor the integrity to give the obvious answer to his question. Their silence highlights her hollowness. I love the honesty as Jesus shows his feelings here. He was both grieved and angry at their hardened hearts. If I was to cut this wee meditation, if I was to give it a name or a title, it would be Between a Rock and a Hard Place. Because in this story, we see Jesus between a rock and a hard place. As he enters the synagogue, the trap is set. And, and initially you think, how, how's Jesus getting out of this? The people who proclaim to be close to God have no concept of the injustice or the limitations they were prepared to impose on this marginalised man. In first century Palestine, you didn't want to have just one hand. Life was tough. And to earn a living at times, you needed to be at full work at your whole body to be healthy and working. So limitations were placed on this man's life eh, because of this disability that he had to live with. Didn't even enter the Pharisee's head because it didn't care. So the second situation is between a rock and a hard place. The Pharisees are between a rock and a hard place. As Jesus asked them a question publicly, that demanded an answer. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? Oh, brilliant. Jesus tells this man, this unnamed man, to stretch out his hand and it was restored. This unnamed man was also between a rock and a hard place because he's aware of the Pharisees being in his presence. He knows the power of the Pharisees and, and the impact it might have on him within his community if he goes against them or, or kind of gets into their bad books. So there's a lot going on in this man's head when Jesus asks him to stretch out his hand. And I love the fact that he does. I don't know exactly the dynamics, but you know, if your hand is withered, I imagine you would spend a lot of your life and you kind of hide it. And Jesus asks him to reach out, to, to, to put his hand into that public domain uh, with so many implications to it. Uh, and he does. He does. And for me, there's a real sense of belief in this man. Jesus disregards and challenges the limitations the Pharisees placed uh, on this man uh, by using the law. Jesus healed a man with a withered hand while the Pharisees left the synagogue with their withered hearts exposed. Hey, so much happens in these few verses. Hardness of heart confines religion to rules and regulations. Now, for you and for me tonight, what's your withered hand? What's my withered hand? That sense, sir, there's always stuff in a life and you want to keep it out of the way. You know, it's, it's kind of hidden. You know about it, but you don't want everybody else to know about it. The bit of yourself you don't want God to know about. Even as I say that, I'm aware of the stupidity of that line. Because God knows all the stuff. The hidden stuff, the unseen stuff. Eh, and God doesn't turn us away. But he basically says, will you come to me with all your nonsense? And, and I will meet you where you are. That's at the very heart of this gospel story. Nothing in any of us is unknown to God. God offers us life beyond our limitations. If you haven't placed limitations on your life, somebody else has. Do not live by those limitations. What's the antidote for a hardened heart? Repentance. Repentance manifests itself in a changed life. Our hearts are under constant attack. That is the reality of being alive. We guard them because we live in a combat zone. But there are casualties. I wonder, has disappointment, discouragement, or disillusionment hit you in the last number of weeks? Because we are exposed to these things and self-doubt and big questions that we're really unsure about. Do not hide these things from God. Put them on the table. What makes us human is not our mind, but our heart. Not our ability to think, but our ability to love. Following Jesus is an evolving process. 
It's so much more than a moment. It's a movement which enables us to move from a way of life defined by defending ourselves to a pattern of life that embraces God's call to surrender ourselves. Oh, that's easy to say, but there's so much in it. And it's not about limitations. It's about opening your expectations. It actually means full immersion in the condition of being human. Can't bluff about. Life sometimes gives you a dig in the head. Um, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Um, and you cry out, you say, God, where are you? The very heart of the Christian story, God is in the midst of the nonsense. God is in the midst of pain. And, and it's there that we can meet God. I don't want that to sound like a cliche. Uh, it's really difficult at times. But we don't run away. We don't hide. Jesus calls us to stretch forward. And, and God meets us. If our hearts become hardened, our eyes become dry. Only God's unconditional grace can transform a hardened heart into a grateful heart. And here's the last line. We don't fully understand the mystery of God's grace. However, through Christ, God meets us where we are. But God's love doesn't leave us as we are. Amen. Just now we, we turn to the canticle Nunc Dimittis eh, from Luke chapter 2. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. I like to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Just now, we're going to have a short time of prayer. So at some point, I will maybe pause uh, just to allow you to, to bring before God people uh, who you're thinking about and situations. Uh, so let's pray. Let us pray to the Lord who is restoring our broken lives with all our heart and soul. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for each other. In a moment's silence, let's commit to God right now someone who's on our mind. Dear God, for each name that has been mentioned to you, we commit them to you this night. Dear God, embrace them tightly. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all ministers of the church and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Tonight we give thanks for our new Archbishop. At this strange and unfamiliar time in our history, we pray for wisdom and renewed vision for Bishop John as he deals with the present challenges and future opportunities. We also pray for our own rector, Malcolm, and his family. We give you thanks for them, and may they know your blessing deeply. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our politicians and for those with high levels of responsibility placed upon them. Lord, we ask your blessing on our leaders. May they know your hand on their lives and wisdom as they consider moving from this present phase of lockdown to whatever the next phase needs to be. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our neighbours, family and friends who work on the front line. Especially we pray for our health workers who are caring for those with COVID-19. We pray for stamina during intense work hours and for safe protocols to be observed in healthcare institutions in order to keep them protected. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for business owners and families facing financial stress as people feel the financial pressure during this time of uncertainty. May they know God's peace in the midst of chaos. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for refugees and prisoners 
and for all who are exposed to the dangers of travel. As people flee from conflict and persecution, we pray particularly for children traveling this night in dangerous conditions. We pray also for wisdom, courage and vision for all those in positions of power that they will tackle the root causes of the various crises in the world. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for loved ones in residential care. Let us pray also for those who mourn as families try to come to terms with the death of a loved one. May those who are weary, doubtful or disillusioned know God's comfort. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and that the poor and hungry may receive a just fare. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, when you call, may we respond. When we get cold feet, be your guide. When you speak, may we hear. When we question, be our wisdom. When you ask, may we answer. When we hesitate, be our resolve. When you show, may we see. When we overlook, be our conscience. When you lead, may we follow. When we stray, be your guide. When you send, may we go. When we fear, be our courage. When you challenge, may we listen. When we fail, be our rock. When you give, may we receive. And may we love as you first loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And together, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And just on page 164, the collect. Lord Almighty, come and scatter the darkness of our hearts by the light of your presence, that we may know you, the light of the world, and the one true God. Blessed this night and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us this night. Amen.